Okay. Oh, bad. Today, we're out the tent. It's raining. We're not driving today. But there is a couple issues with the old flare we got to pretend to rig off the get go. I uh, noticed she's flooding a little bit, and we got a problem with the dash light. So, we'll catch you after the intro. So guys and gals on YouTube, Lane, what we got to do here today, we got to pull a spark plug out of here before an after close at dinner time. It's currently 9.30, so i got to get on the go. I had a, usually like getting up and having coffee and watching some YouTube myself, but this morning, I was helping the wife, you know, probably geared up. So there, there's a spark plug right there. And this is very clean. Like, there's nothing wrong with that at all. No, that's I'm not replacing them. These are these are fairly new. They're probably about a year old. So this is the second one I pulled is look like that. So now I'm gonna go dig into the distributor. So I'm gonna put this plug back in, and I'll get back at you. So to get the distributor on a Mopar. First thing you gotta do, remove this air cleaner. I think I got a better looking duck for that too. Jimmy brought with this. This is the cleaner that Jimmy had on the two barrel. He had a two barrel bottom with that on top. So I took the bottom off my old Dodge truck that I had because we're not using her for now and put the bigger air cleaner on her. So there, let me get it your way. So that way you can see what I'm going to be doing here. There's a brand new little rock, which I'm probably going to end up replacing because performance they're not really what you call a performance carburetor but they'll do the job if you're just screwed down the street Ooh. Ooh. we got some burnage Ooh. yeah if anyone you know knows these dogs just the striver cat and road buttons and palm that thing these are 20 bucks I just take them every year in my old dog truck and just throw them away so we're definitely going to pick up a cap and a button for this whole thing. So, now we'll, now we got a kind of a basic idea of what we're chasing here. Maybe just a little bit of hit for spark. Because that two grams, she's got a little skip to her. Plug's shown fine. I'd say that, that carburetor's brand new. There's, there's no way that's flooding. She's just not firing right with her distributor. So, we'll get the Napa, get some interior light bulbs, which I think I need, which is probably not going to be wiring. And that's not something I don't really want to do today, but we're going to do it anyway because that's what carriage we dealt with. So, I'll get the Napa, get some parts, and we'll get back at you. Yeah, remember that rain axe we put on the other day? Huh? Nice and beading on the window. Oh, yeah. Well, let's get Napa. Well, guys and gals, YouTube land, I'm back. Went Napa. Got us a brand new distributor cap. The only problem being, there's what she looks like new. The only problem being is they didn't have my rotor button. They have to get it in from Lunenburg. But, me being a Dodge man that I am and hoarding stuff, you know some strange reason I had one and I thought you know I'll just go to old girl they she has a brand new one in her well this is what old girls looks like this is a spare I kept 
this is the flare ace this is the old girls you can see the bottoms are different size but one time we had a screw up and I forgot about it got, couldn't take it back but guess what it's gonna work in my favor today only took three years so I'll get this in the car and I'll show you what to do okay the first thing you want to do now is you want to put your rotor button on get her in the camera here you can see there's a little notch here right there you see that little notch inside and there's a little groove right here on the distributor on the actual shaft so what you want to do is make sure that is lined up with that and make sure you're setting all the way down like so so now sorry if my arms in your way you can see where number one is there that way I got kind of a reference well on these dodges they have a little vent on top of their distributor cap and that always points towards the firewall get this out of the box so just like this we'll set on there this little breather here points towards the firewall so get her on in place here Yeah, sometimes they don't set on there really, really easy. Come on now. Don't be like that. What is going on here? There we are. Alright, that was gutter. And now, give the old snap. Come on, there we go. There you are. Mopar cat installed. So guys and gals of YouTube land. Now we're gonna transfer the wires and you're probably thinking, oh my goodness. No, this is not that bad. So I already got the cap, my old factory cat marked out with number one. Easiest word you're gonna remember right off the get go is this little fella here. Oh, look at that. Huh? Right on. Hmm. Give me a minute. I might have something. Update. We got as clean as we're going to get it. I thought I had a bunch of wires. You see, I thought I had all coins. But no. All I have is the long ones. And Napa didn't have nothing to stop, so they won't be here until Tuesday. So we'll have to deal with what we got. So what I ended up doing is I cleaned it up with a piece of emery strip. There you are. Tuck the pliers and bend it out a little bit. You know, this for you chef guys out there, yeah, she got these Delco parts on her. Well, that's what happens. That's probably what's giving my little skip. I would say other than that, in the cap, she was rusty, <laughs> really rusty. So I'll bring you fellas in here, you guys and gals. There we are. So now, the very first easy wire to do is coal wire. Now, also, people, you see this little stuff here? This is dielectric grease. I couldn't find my big tube, but I always have a bunch of these because it comes with the spark plug wire sets. That's why that wire was rusty is what it is. Because Dodge, in their infamous wisdom, decided that it was a good idea to put that right out in the elements, right beside, you know, where all that vintage is and what have you. So I usually just take it and go around, the, just put it around the boot, like so. Same thing over here, like so. It's this. Like that, give her a little, you know, a little dab will do. This stuff goes quite a ways, right? You want it to fire too, right? So I usually just leave the boot up in the electrodes so that way no moisture can get in. So, what I was saying earlier, your coil wires are easiest wire to remember, generally the last one I'll hook up to. So, that will do that. So, number one's marked on the spark plug, 
And for any of you GM guys out there, it's still the same thing, 18436572. And a lot of times it says on the distributor. Now, the only reason why I'm not lubing these ones is because we got new ones coming from Napa. I shouldn't really have bought them, but I want this thing to run and fire up and whatever. So. Number one, usually what I do is I'll set the cat beside this and I'll take one off one at a time. I know what I'm doing because it'll go one, eight, four, three, six, five, seven, two. I, I know that personally, but for you people home, you may not know. And it's be easier because it's a little intimidating. You can get that firing order messed up and she don't run right well, that's not good. So what I'm gonna do here now is I'll continue on with this and I'll show you the finished results. All right, YouTube, got a little update for you. Kind of a, we're gonna fix something that I said. So this is cylinder number one. I said one, eight, four, three. No, that's wrong. It's one, eight, four, three, six, five, seven, two. I don't know where my mind was there. I, as soon as I watched the video and I was editing, I went, that's wrong. <laughs> what are you doing? Sorry that YouTube, just my brain is frazzled with this little skit. And if anyone knows me with it comes to vehicles, I love vehicles and I hate it when they work wrong. So remember people, check the way your distributor rotates. So this one would rotate this way. So it would fire one, eight, three, four, six, five, seven, two. You know, one, eight, four, three, six, five, seven, two. There you are. So we'll get back to the interior. So YouTube, I'll go saying to you, this cat, you see that, where that, this is where the coil wire was? Look how rusty that is. I wonder if this thing wasn't running right. And you can see the green on it, off the other ones that were green. Inside, yeah, probably, yeah, this cat's done. For 20 bucks, that's why I just said to heck with it. So, we've already set everything up. I set my thing right like that, and then I take my Sharpie marker and I mark number one, just for a reference. Now I always do that, just in case you're on the side of the highway in the middle of the night, whatever. You start getting mixed up because you're tired because you're screwing with something like that. It just helps you out. So, let's see if this thing's going to fire. Okay, let's get some carbon dioxide poison out of the family keys. <laughs> Let's start this thing up and see if she's going to fire. She hasn't fired up yet today, so this will be like a definitely cold start. But I'm only going to fire it up quick just to see if she runs. Not happy. I'll get back to you. I found out while she was running rough. I imagine you guys were just screaming at the camera that year. Murray, your gasket went flippity flip. But then I noticed something. That vacuum line there that was going to the brake booster, I unplugged it so you guys could see the distributor. Let's try this again and see if the skip's going. Made me nervous there and thought, oh great. What did I just screw up? I just tried to fix it. So, we'll get the air cleaner back on, and then we'll hit in the interior and find out what's wrong with it. Okay, guys and gals, I got the air cleaner back on. My fancy nut that Jimmy had on there won't work because the stud's not really long enough, and oh well. Let's 
start it back up. We'll make sure nothing else is wrong before we continue on. Just want to make sure. Just making sure we're going on cruise tomorrow. figure this out some other time when I really got patience because that's I know it's got to be either in that distributor or in the carburetor I just don't know I got to diagnose this so but you can take this for a simple little quick tune-up that that's how you would change your cap your button your wires I didn't do the spark plugs because I like I said I done them a year ago so I pulled every plug out none of them are fouled up so we'll get into the interior and we'll find out what's going on with the bulbs and then we'll get back to this ignition problem. So you too. We'll give her a quick rev here for you. So that's what I have is a little skip at about two grand. We'll get onto this dash here and we'll figure out right down in the comments below what, what you might think it is. Like, I, I know I don't want to spend too much money because I know that engine is going to be coming out and we're going to be tankering with it. It may even go away. It may just need a good highway run. It, seriously, or either that, that coil wire might be still screwed up a little bit, but it ran fine other than that. Like that two grand, I don't notice that when I'm driving. I just notice it when I'm in idling and give her a rev. I, I checked for vacuum leaks. I took a propane cylinder and ran it all along my intake. Double check my car bolts. I'm gonna check my little extra screws stuff tomorrow, which is only set for low idle anyway. That's all those screws are for. I even pulled out the metering rods just to find out what I had for a metering rod. I do got a number on that now, and I am gonna check the Brock kit. I don't really wanna to waste too much money on this carburetor because I'm really debating on buying a 650 brawler or a holly or maybe a used holly or a remanufactured holly something like that because i really want a little bit of performance because i do plan on taking this to greenfield so enough of me jib jabbering i'm gonna go grab a quick bite to eat and i'll be right back at you and we'll dig into this dash okay youtube so to get at these dash lights we gotta get at these screws here along on that dash bezel and these will come out and this just snaps into place up top here like so so i'll get at that get rocking out and i'll get right back at you okay youtube land sorry about that just literally getting off the phone with the orig the original owner that i bought this from well he was not the original original he's this i'd say the second owner yeah he just called me up i was just getting ready to hit record and jimmy called so these lights here will go out you give her the old dash the old wham on the top Bloop, they come back on so i come in turn them on see nothing's going on here so now we give her the old phones a rally and there we are so i figure either those bulbs or bulb wherever it is up in there is getting weak because when you hit a bump, it will something it will go out too. See, so we'll get into this dash and we'll figure it out. I got the bezel off already, so that way I can see what's going on and we'll see what's happening. I'll let you know. Okay, future Mary, to whoever put this in in March 30th, 1978, like. Holy crap, man. I had to tear the whole steering column and everything in just to get at that. So I could get it unplugged because I just couldn't get these monstrosities up in there until that was out of the way. So these are 194s. This was kind of falling out. So that kind of was concerning. I hope that's fine. But these are 194 bulbs. 
So what I'm gonna do is go back under the hood, hook the battery up, and see which bulbs are out. I'll get back at you. So, that plug there, watch this. See, I wiggle that and it on off, on off, on off. So the problem is in that plug. And I guess I'll have to diagnose but and see what is going on in there. Hopefully nothing drastic. Maybe it just needs to be cleaned up. You know, it is quite old. It is from 1978. So I'll get at it and get back to you. So upbeat. What I ended up doing was taking that plug and reefing sideways on it. Kind of giving it like a little bend and it gave it better connection and it wouldn't wiggle back and forth. And now we're good. And I can turn it on or on, off, on, off. Perfect. Awesome. Now I'm just going to put this whole mess back together again. I'll be back at you. So to everybody in YouTube land, this is the first time I've ever taken anything apart on a dash in the Valare. So the first thing you're going to want to do is take your bezel off, your wood grain one. Then next, your kick panel here for your knees and stuff will hit. Then lower this down. Then you take, drop this, put it to the side. After that's all said and done, you remove all your screws out of your speedometer. Then... You go up underneath the top of the steering column would be in here because that's why it's important to draw up the steering column. You can get your arm up in there and pinch this little thing on your speedo cable and give her a yank down and poof, the speedometer comes out. So I'll continue on wrenching this back together and I'll get back at you. Okay, YouTube, we're all back together. Still lit up. The only bulb I had to change was that one. This one I had to bend that plug that's right on the right in this area on the speedometer. And we'll turn the light on here. All the dash, steering columns all back together, bezels all back in, stereos all back in. So that's gonna conclude it for me today. It was a busy day. Now, I might tanker a little bit more with this, but I will not bore you guys and gals with that. And if, but if I do find something, I may go live for the first time. Might. I'm not saying I will, but I might. So if you like what you saw today, like, share, and subscribe. Ring the bell, so that way you don't miss any of my new upcoming content. And also, tomorrow, it's going to be a drive video. We're going to Barrington, going to do a loop around Cape Island, back home, maybe do the scenic route on the way back. So, please stay tuned for that, subscribe for that, because that's going to be a beautiful drive. Falls out, the colors are, you know, right at their max, and it's going to be a gorgeous drive. So, get off the couch, get out in your tent, or garage, or in your driveway, and remember, get wrenching.